Hey, it's me again with more Thunderbolt Fantasy Reviews. This was a really, really interesting episode. A tiny bit lighter on the action than usual, but still good all around. Lots of really good plot development and character building this week. And if you like videos like this, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, um, ring that bell. Hey, I'd love to have more interaction on these videos. Okay, so we find out what Zing Hai is actually planning. She tells Seven Blasphemous Deaths that she's planning on using the Void Junction as a time machine of sorts. And on the plus side, she can't control the leaf portals well enough to jump through time and space quite yet, just different locations. And because Seven Blasphemous Deaths has some sort of power, well not like power power, but more like political power, among other demons, Zing Hai is hoping she'll be able to help her out. Seven Blasphemous Deaths does know of somebody. A demon who specializes in time magic manipulation. She's all like, oh, why don't you ask Azzy Belfer? Now Zing is all super excited about this because she's been planning this for quite some time. Although she claims this will be a great opportunity to bring back the invincible sorceress Zhao Jun Lin, I'm thinking she may have another motive. Like getting back at Chang for what he did to her in season one. Now granted, I'm sure Zhao Jun Lin's resurrection is pretty much confirmed by the opening credits. But yeah, this is Necro Bitch we're talking about. Grudges run deep with her. At least I'm assuming they do. And oh damn, Lin was listening in on this entire conversation. And I'm wondering if he'll make an attempt to stop Zing Hai? I mean, he's already tied up with the Order of the Divine Swarm since he's working for them to get Shang. Lin is such an interesting character, I'm just wondering what is he going to do next? Well, I didn't have to wait that long because back in the Void Junction, our heroes meet up with him there. He told Wan he had some business there, and Wan was like, okay, sure, you can go to the Void Junction for a bit. So, he reveals to Shang and company what he learned in the previous scene, and Shang really isn't surprised. Almost as if he knew the true potential of the Void Junction, but really never said anything about it. He then said that he's been to the Void Junction before, even though it was recently made. And this was some future version of the Void Junction when it was destroyed? So, Shang has a lot he's not telling us. And hell, I guess these are all really good characters. Because the writing in this series is still really incredible. I mean, come on, it's Orobuchi doing it. Anyway, Lang is pretty pissed at Shang for not telling him about it earlier. But Lang sees this as a perfect opportunity to go back in time and make sure that Ten Ming never gets blinded. Shang is totally against the idea, saying something like, undoing something that has happened should never be done. 
So did he try this out before and some worse consequence happened? Like, why is he against changing the past? Like some crazy butterfly effect? Will we find that out when Seven Blasphemous Deaths becomes human shaped again? This conversation is cut short, however. When Yi shows up and is looking for Lin, Lin just says, Hey, uh, you should really go somewhere right now. Lin Ya says, Like where, for example? And Lin just says, Anywhere would be fine. And he just shoves the portal leaf into Shang's hands. Lang grabs on, and they just teleport away. And Juan gets left behind. So he quickly hides, and Yi shows up. Yi still doesn't trust Lin, saying, Hey, I saw you talking to Shang. What are you planning? And Lin must have rolled like a 15 on his charisma check because he managed to smooth talk his way out of it, saying, Hmm, if you would have given me more time, I would have made Shang trust me more. Hey, you fully don't trust me, and you're telling me information. What's up with that? So, Yi goes off, and Lin says that he'll catch up in a few minutes. Juan pops out and wonders if Lin will betray them, and Lin said something like, If it sounded like I will, then everything is going smoothly. I'm not 100% sure if Yi is completely fooled by Lin, or if he's just going along with Lin and doing some counter manipulation because, ooh, that would be interesting. Who can manipulate the other more? Lin was hoping that Juan would have portaled away with Shang and Lang because they're no longer allies as far as the villains are concerned. And seeing Juan with them will raise some questions. So, until Shang returns, Juan will have to hide out in Seven Sins Tower, which might be an interesting plan, because the villains would never think about looking in their own hideout for the heroes. Okay now, this is kind of interesting. Back at Seven Sins Tower, Zing Hai and her sister are chatting it up with Azabelfer. And it turns out that around 200 years ago, the Demon Lord gave an order not to mess with the humans. So, although he's bored with Hell, and equally so with humanity, there's not too much he can really do about it. But Seven Blasphemous Death thinks otherwise. As a Belfer has broken the Demon Lord's orders before, so she might be able to talk him into it. So, Shang, Lang, and Ling Ya wind up in this really interesting looking green wasteland with bone spikes everywhere. As they're starting to explore, they get attacked by three creatures who reveal that this is the demon realm. And Shang's all like, what the hell? We're literally in hell? And all of these guys have some really interesting attack styles. Like you have that vampire guy just teleporting all over. You have that burnt face guy just speed crawling around and like headbutting and biting at Shang. And then you have fat Bane just bouncing around like a pinball. Ling Ya says they're being powered up by the Demon Realm spirit veins. And then Burnt Face, who seems to be their leader, says, Without holy weapons, you can't expect to defeat us. It's at this point, Shang decides to go all out and starts kicking major ass 
which raises another question. Who is Shang, really? I mean, he's hiding so much about his past, there's got to be some good backstory with him. Because he's standing his own, even without bringing out the Sorcerer's Sword Index. So, Lang starts rocking out and singing the previous season's theme, which is still my favorite theme. Maybe even one of my favorite anime themes as a whole. And the more I hear it, Judgment is getting closer up there to my favorite anime theme list. Also up there is Complication by Rookies is Punked from Durarara, which we covered on Brandon's Discuss Anime. You should check that video out. Eh, sorry for the sidetrack. So, Lang starts singing his story, which weakens the demons long enough for Shang to kill Fat Bane and incapacitate Burnt Face with some kind of thunder attack. At least I think this happens, because Vampire gets scared and runs away. We see Burnt Face pass out, but Fat Bane really isn't around anywhere. And this has a very interesting grab of an ending. As Lang was singing, Asbelfer recognized the song, and he was saying something like, Through all the twists of fate, destiny would award him an opportunity like this? I'm all like, dude, what? How do you know Lang? What are you even talking about? I mean, you guys both have fiery orange hair. Like, are you related to Lang? We don't know much about his father, since we do know the tragedy of what happened to his mother. That could always be a possibility that they might throw at us. But this is still really interesting. And this was episode 7. If I remember last season, Psycho Monk got 7 blasphemous deaths in episode 9. Right? So I'm thinking Seven Blasphemous Death will resurrect herself as Zhao Jun Lin about that time. So maybe in two weeks we'll see that. And besides that, what's going to happen with Azabel Fair? Oh, I can't wait for next week. So join me right here next week for more Thunderbolt Fantasy. Catch everybody later.